Hi, everybody. We are uh, hopefully good to go in about 26 seconds. We'll find out. Once again, I slept in a little bit this morning, so I am ready, but uh, I'll just do a little check here. Looks like the audio is working and we'll be ready to start in about six seconds. Here we go. Let me find the right place to click. Well, hello. <laughs> hello and welcome to this English lesson where I am once again going to talk about describing people. In the past, I've done four other English lessons uh, on this topic but there are so many ways to describe people. This topic in particular will focus on how to describe children. Not all of the words I'm going to teach you are for children but most of them we use primarily when we're talking about our kids or our nieces and nephews or our students in our classrooms. So, this English lesson will be will be about describing primarily children uh, but you can use some of these to describe other people as well. So, stick around. Uh, we'll do this uh, English lesson about describing people. We'll start in just a moment. Before we do get started though, just a few things. I want to do an audio check because when I get up late, I don't always test everything properly but it looks like everything is working great. It looks like the streaming software is working perfectly. So, I hope you have an enjoyable lesson. Please use the chat uh, mostly for English conversations between you and other people in the chat. I do see Lolly Lolly and Anuat and Rod and Brett from American English with this guy. Corey J is there. Bonjour, Corey J. Uh, let's see. Madi is here. I know Mode Ags is here. Esio Wu, Sam the Taiwanese. Norma is here. When I scroll back, I see Yarlin. I see Hanabai. I see Ishiru. I see so many people. Oh, Dave and Todd are here, of course. On a Friday morning, Vito is here. Good to see you too, Vito. Um, and who else do I see? Lots of other people. Island Resort is here as well. If I didn't mention your name, I'm sorry. But let's get the lesson started. Remember, if you have a question, you can use the link that will be shared. Use that to ask the question and I will try to get to it. Um, let's get started. Rambunctious. So, <laughs> Uh, as I mentioned, many of these words we would use to describe children, okay? When I was a kid, I was rambunctious. When you describe someone as being rambunctious, it means they have a lot of energy and they run around a lot and they jump up and down when they have questions. Um, I do wanna remind you too, this is more than a vocabulary lesson. You should listen to the phrases I use whenever I talk about a word so that you can use them yourself as well. I said when I was a kid, I was rambunctious. Um, when we went to my grandparents house, my dad would always get annoyed if we ran around like crazy. Um, well, we use the word crazy in English to emphasize. Uh, when I was a kid, if I ran around like crazy uh, and my face was all red because I was hot from running around, my dad would say to me, stop being a crazy kid. Stop being so rambunctious. Um, grandpa and grandma don't like it but my grandpa and grandma would usually be smiling. <laughs> so, it was a funny time but I was a rambunctious child. I was full of energy. Um, whenever I was somewhere uh, visiting, I was always running around and jumping up and down and doing crazy things like most kids do. Um, we have another phrase in English. Sometimes we describe a kid or a child as being a handful. So, this is neither good nor bad. It can, it can, sorry, this can either be good or bad. Sometimes when you say, whoa, he's, he's really a handful. Maybe you have a nephew or niece or one of your own kids or you know a child who's four or five years old that's just always um, doing things. Like in this picture, I just assumed one sister is knitting and the other one is just trying to undo the knitting. So, we would describe that child as a handful. Um, a child that sometimes doesn't listen to their parents, we would describe as a handful. Um, but again, it can have a positive connotation as well. You can say that, whoa, your kids are so full of energy. It must, they must be quite a handful. Um, we, <laughs> we also use the phrase uh, always up to something. 
um, kids who are a handful are often up to something all the time. They're always doing something. Um this is definitely a negative word. Uh a child who is spoiled is a child whose parents have given them everything that they want in life. So, when I was a child, I was not spoiled. <laughs> My parents um did not have a lot of money. Even though you see that I live on a really big property, when my parents immigrated from Holland, they did not have very much money. So, I didn't have a lot of toys when I was a kid. I was not spoiled. A spoiled child gets every toy they want from their parents. A spoiled child, if they go to the grocery store with their parents, they get every kind of food that they ask for. Like, I want that. I want that. So, a spoiled child gets everything that they want. I see Lolly Lolly in the chat saying, I was a real handful. Yes, I wonder how some of you were as children, whether you were a real handful or whether some of you were rambunctious as well. I hope none of you were spoiled. Spoiled children, children who get everything that they're that they want sometimes end up being spoiled adults a little bit. They end up being a little bit entitled. So, when you describe someone as being entitled. You could describe children and teenagers and adults as being entitled. It means that they feel like everything should be given to them. A child who is spoiled in my opinion, a child who gets everything they want when they are a kid sometimes grows up to be an entitled teenager or an entitled adult. They think that everything should just be given to them. Um they feel like they're entitled to it. It's kind of a strange personality trait when you are entitled. Um entitled people tend to be a little bit difficult to be around. Um it can be frustrating um (laughs) to it can be frustrating to be around people who are entitled because they feel they sometimes make you feel like you should do things for them. I a long time ago worked with someone who was entitled. It was a strange experience. Um another word for rambunctious is hyper. I think the longer form of the word is hyperactive. I think some children are hyperactive. Uh when I was a kid, uh I just gotta check my slides here. I would have been described as hyper as well. When a child is hyper, they have lots of energy. They have trouble sitting in their seat. They're kind of hyper. They talk a lot. They run around a lot. Um children who are hyper. Uh, are certainly like that. Sorry, I just see in the chat Brett saying, I was every parent's dream as a kid. So, uh, I have a slide maybe that describes Brent coming up later. We'll see if if this one applies to Brent. Some children are inquisitive and I know this seems like a really long and big English word but we do use this word. Um we we will say things like, oh, Um one of my children is really inquisitive or my neighbor's kid is really inquisitive or my nephew or niece is very inquisitive. An inquisitive child is interested in the things around them. So, in this picture, you can see an adult playing a guitar and the child is interested. The child is being inquisitive. They want to know where the sounds come from. Maybe they want to play the strings themselves. Um my children have always been inquisitive. It's really cool. So, when I do things, they like to ask me questions about it. They're not as inquisitive about the flower farm though. They like computers but they don't all like flower farming. So, hopefully they hopefully they they grow into it. So, um this maybe is gonna be the one that describes Brent because I saw he said that he was his parents dream child. (laughs) Maybe Brent was well behaved. Um a well behaved child is a child who doesn't break the rules. A well behaved child does what their parents tell them to do. A well behaved child at school listens to the teacher. When the teacher gives instructions, a well behaved child will say, okay, no problem. So, different than a spoiled child or maybe an entitled child, a well behaved child um is just a nice kid. That would probably be how we would describe them as well. Your children are very well behaved. People would sometimes say that to me and then I would say, you should see them at home. (laughs) 
Sometimes when we were out in public when our children were younger, they were well behaved. They were always well behaved in public but not always well behaved at home. So, there you go. Some good information about the term well behaved. So, the opposite of well behaved would be rebellious. This word is often used when talking about teenagers. Some teenagers go through a rebellious stage or a rebellious phase in their life. So, sometime around age 14 or 15 until they're about 20 or 21, they rebel. They don't want to listen to people who are in charge of them. They don't want to listen to authority. So, rebellious teenagers sometimes don't listen to their parents. They don't listen to their teachers. Sometimes they get in trouble with the law and sometimes they engage in behavior that we call self-destructive, okay? So, a rebellious teenager might do things that are self-destructive like smoking. Sometimes maybe they do drugs but definitely teenagers who are rebellious do not listen to teachers, do not listen to their parents. Rebellious teacher are re- rebellious teachers. That was a, that was a little slip there. Yes, teachers are sometimes rebellious but not. That's not what I meant. Rebellious teenagers uh just don't listen to people in authority over them. When I use the phrase in authority, that would mean parents or their boss or their teachers, people who are in authority over them. Um you might have run into a child who is alert. A child who is alert. Um well, it's the opposite of a child who falls asleep. When we would drive in our van a long distance, some of our kids would fall asleep but we have other kids who were very alert while we were driving. They like to look at things out of the windows. Um sometimes children uh who are alert sit in the front of the classroom and they're very interested in the lesson. So, a child who is alert doesn't always have their eyes wide open but it's a good way to remember the word alert. Um a child who is alert is certainly paying attention. A child who is alert um is certainly aware of what's happening around them definitely. Um let's see here. Yes, Brent has to run. Uh sorry, Brent. I know you have to work today. I don't. In Canada, we don't work on Good Friday. I know in the US, you guys still do sometimes but we don't. We get the day off. Um you might know a child or an adult who is confident. I'll, I'll, I need to remember when to tell you that we can use these adjectives for both adults and children but definitely a child or teenager can be confident and an adult can be confident as well. When you are confident, you are sure of yourself. You are self-assured. A couple of extra terms there. When you are sure of yourself, you don't doubt yourself. So, if you doubt yourself, you don't think you can do things. If you are confident, you believe you can do something. If you were on a basketball team and the coach said, you need to play. Go on the court. If you are confident, you will get up and you'll go on the court and you will believe that you are going to score a point or two points in basketball. If you doubt yourself, then you might not. So, uh let's see here. Um next word is considerate. I think we actually did this word in a previous describing lesson but a considerate child is a child who is aware of what people around them need and is very helpful and kind and polite. So, a considerate child would hold the door open for me when I walk into the school. A considerate sister would help their younger brother with his homework, okay? Uh, A considerate person looks at people around them and thinks, how can I help this person and then helps them do whatever they're doing. So, um in this picture, you can see a sister helping her brother with homework. I would say that she's a very considerate person. She understood that her brother needed help and she helped him. Um considerate people are very nice. When I was young and when I did work on the farm, My mom was very considerate. She would bring us food and snacks when we were working on the farm. So, again, considerate is another one that you can use to talk about children and adults as well. Hey, let's do a few questions here. Let me get my questions going. Um let me see here. Uh let's see here. 
First question is from Yo-Yo from Taiwan. Hey, as I'm doing that, I do want to shout out to a few people in the chat again. I see Natalia Illusion has come. Hi, Natalia. Good to see you. Um, for those of you that do watch my other channel, you'll you'll know that I am uh, self isolating right now because there was a student last week in my class who tested positive for COVID. So, I have to remain in this room for 14 days. This is the seventh this is the seventh or eighth day. I can't remember. Um I don't feel sick. I don't think I have COVID. I'm going for a test later today to find out. Um uh, but anyways, it just when I saw Natalia Illusion here who is a viewer from my other channel as well. That reminded me of that. But hi to Guhan Zone. Hi to Norma and American English with this guy. He's still here but he says he's gotta go see you Brent. Have a good day. Uh hi to Daniel. Hi to Anuj. Hi to Mahama AF. Good to see all of you. First question from Yo-Yo. Hi, teacher Bob. How to describe people who is not always friendly to you? Thank you in advance and have a great day. Well, we would just say they're mean. Um the opposite, if you know someone who's always nice, we would say they're amiable which is related a little bit to the French word M-A which means to love but a person who is amiable is just very friendly. A person who is not friendly, we would say they're mean we might say that they're unfriendly. It's a very unfriendly person. You might say they're abrasive. That's another word we use. An abrasive person is just not nice um all the time. Let's see here. Next question is from Mode. Hi all. I just want to thank Mr. Bob by sharing a nice but long word I'd use to describe him. Conscientious. It's a hard one to say, eh? I was worried I was gonna mispronounce it. Conscientious. Enjoy your extended weekend. Please try to relax and stay safe. So, two things about this. A conscientious person is similar to a considerate person. When you're conscientious, you're aware of what people around you are doing and how you can help them. You're aware of the situation you're in. Uh it just means a person who is thoughtful and considerate. So, thanks for that word mode. And then, enjoy what did it say? Enjoy your extended weekend. Yes, by the way, there is no live lesson tomorrow uh because it's a long weekend here and I'm taking a little bit of break. So, today we have a live lesson. Tomorrow, we will all be taking a day off. Todd and Dave and I are taking a day off tomorrow and then I will return on Tuesday with a new lesson. Let's see here. Next question is from Ruslan. Hello, dear teacher. Dear teacher Bob, I would like to describe you as a very kind and positive person. I wish you one million subscribers by the summer. Stay healthy, sir. Well, thank you for that, Ruslan. Um people don't believe me when I say this but to me, it's not that important that I get to one million subscribers. It would be nice. I will celebrate (laughs) if I get one million subscribers but to me, I I just like every lesson I make brings me joy. I like thinking of ideas and making lessons. So, if I get to a million, I'll have a a live stream party but uh thanks for that wish and I try to be as kind and positive as I can be but what I like to remind people of is this. I wasn't always as kind and as considerate as I am. As everyone, when I look back on my life, I remember stages in my life where I wasn't as kind as I could have been but I'm working on it. Every day is a brand new day and a day to try and be a better person. Uh Tai Ho says, hi, Bob. My question is, what did you what did you look like when you were younger? Have a great day. Um I will show all of you some pictures someday. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm ready to do that but maybe I should do a Tuesday lesson that's just about how to talk about when you were younger and I should show pictures of myself when I was younger. I'll think about it. Not sure if I'll do that but I'll think about it. Uh let's see here. Augustine says, hello, Bob. What's the difference between a hope and a wish? Well, they're kind of the same thing in that they are a desire for something that you don't have or a desire for something to happen in the future. So, I am going to get a COVID test today. I hope it's negative, okay? Um when you wish something though, it's it's more like you want a thing. Like my wish for my birthday is that I get, what do I want for my birthday? I actually don't know. I had an idea 
I think I wanted a food processor for my birthday. I don't know. We'll see. So, they're slightly different but uh they are some they are a desire for something that you don't have. Let's see here. Natalia has the next question and then we'll get back to the lesson in a bit. Does humble mean a modest or low ranking poor person? How could we use the word humble? In my humble opinion, I have a humble position in a humble company. So, a humble person is not arrogant. It's the opposite of arrogant. A humble person doesn't tell everyone how great they are. A humble person, let me put it this way. If a basketball player has an amazing game and then after the game, they interview them and they say, you know, I really have to thank my teammates. They really helped me get the ball. It's because of my teammates that I had a good game. That is a humble person, okay? Now, humble can also mean like if I say I'm from humble beginnings, it means that my parents didn't have a lot of money. So, it it doesn't exactly mean poor but it can have that secondary meaning as well. Um and then in my humble opinion simply means I don't wanna sound like I know everything. So, this is just my opinion. So, yes. Um Quick question, not on topic but I'll answer it. Hello, Bob. I have a question. Why do some people say often and others say often or often? So, it just depends on how quickly you say it. I often don't say the T but often when I'm making a point, I will say the T really hard um but most of the time, uh most often, we don't actually say the T. Most often, we don't actually say the T. It's up to you. You can decide. Um when you speak quickly, some words are diminished and we uh don't don't say them. Rod is the last question for this segment and then we'll get back to the lesson. Um hello, dear Mr. Bob. What was the craziest thing you've done when you were a child? You can't forget. Have a great Friday and stay safe. Thank you. What is the craziest thing I did as a child? I think I explained. I I might have answered this once before. I rode my bike. My brother and I rode our bikes to the edge of a big hill and there was a path and I said to my brother, let's ride down the path and he said, no, it's dangerous and I said, ah, it's fine and then I rode down the path and I wiped out. I fell off my bike and I hit my head. Which side did I hit it on? And then I had to get stitches. I cracked my head open. That's one of the craziest things I did as a kid. Um I'm not gonna put Leo's question on the screen but Leo, the offensive word you're asking about on a scale of one to ten, it's it's definitely offensive. It's a ten. <laughs> so, Leo, if you're watching, the word that you are asking about in the in the forum about whether it's offensive, it's definitely offensive. It's a full on ten out of ten offensive word. Uh hey, before we jump back, let me just say hi to a few people. Hi, Bako Bako. Hi, Lavarts. Hi, Natalia Illusion. I think I said hi to. Hi, Marina. It looks like Norma is here. Actually, I might have said hi to Norma. Oh, Judith or Rose is here. Uh it's good to see you, Judith. Judith is a long time viewer who leaves um some of my favorite comments. Um sorry, I don't mean to say that someone's my favorite but Judith has been around for a very long time and I always appreciate uh comments from Judith uh for sure. Um let me see here. Let's get back to the slides. Determined. If a child or an adult is determined, they are going to work hard to get what they want. A determined student will listen in class and will do their homework and will even do more than their homework. A determined student will have like a calendar on their wall. They will plan how they're going to get their work done. A determined person wants to succeed and will work really hard in an organized and well thought out way to be successful, okay? Another good example would be if you needed to pass an English test A determined person would study every day for every single day before the test. They would be determined to pass the test and you would see that they are determined by how much work they did. Uh let's see here. Articulate. So, someone who is articulate, this can be used to describe children or adults. A person who is articulate is well spoken. Of course, they're going to pronounce their words correctly but it's more 
than just pronouncing your words correctly. An articulate person is someone who is a good speaker. An articulate person when they talk in front of a group of people is very engaging and fun and enjoyable to listen to. So, an articulate person we would also say has a way with words. That's another way in English to describe it. Someone who has a way with words is articulate. Often when you go to a graduation, there will be someone called the valedictorian who gives a speech on behalf of the class and many times after the graduation, people will say, oh, the valedictorian was very articulate. That was a really good speech that they gave. So, an articulate person is well spoken. They speak clearly. They're fun and enjoyable to listen to and uh, we describe them as articulate. Persistent. So, a persistent child and an adult can be persistent as well. A persistent child would be a child who asks questions until they get the answer they want. When I when I went to the grocery store when my kids were younger, they would want things in the grocery store and they would ask and ask and ask. They would be very persistent. They would say, I want those cookies and I would say no and they would say, but I really want those cookies and I would say no and they would say, if you don't get me those cookies, I'm gonna scream and I would say, no, go, go ahead but they were very persistent. They asked over and over again if I would buy the cookie that they liked. Uh let's see here. Uh Mode Eggs says, Mr. Bob is definitely articulate. Thank you, Mode Eggs. I try to be articulate. I try to be engaging and fun to listen to. Uh and Lolly Lolly says, I am determined to learn English. Great example phrase, Lolly Lolly. Très bien. Uh enthusiastic. This word gives English learners some trouble. It looks like a big word. It looks hard to pronounce. Let me say it a few more times. Enthusiastic. That th can kind of trip you up a little bit. An enthusiastic child is excited to do something. If I tell my students that we're going on a class trip, they are very enthusiastic. If I tell my students we're having a test tomorrow, they are not enthusiastic. <laughs> so, in class, if you announce something like, we're having snacks today, students will be very enthusiastic. They will be excited because we are going to have snacks. They will be enthusiastic. They will be happy. They will smile a lot and they will be excited to do whatever I had announced. Talkative. This is another one. I think there's about three or four in this lesson that were in other lessons. Let me just jump to the chat. Modag says persistent equals insistent. Yes, exactly the same. When you're insistent, you're persistent. You just very much want the thing, same thing. Um just let me see here. Um talkative. Yes. So, I did do this in a previous lesson but it's worth mentioning that a, a talkative person talks a lot, okay? You might have a friend who's very talkative. Children are often very talkative. Children can be quiet which is the opposite or you might have a child that you know who is very talkative. Maybe when you take your own kids or a nephew or a niece or maybe a younger sibling uh or maybe just one of the neighborhood kids, they just might be talkative. Whenever you're around them, they talk a lot. It's usually a positive description but if we add two in front of it, if I say, ah, he's too talkative, it becomes negative, okay? So, you have to uh kind of listen to how the word is being used. Trustworthy. So, someone who is trustworthy will not lie to you, will not steal from you, will not do things that are mean. A trustworthy person, we would in English say they've got your back, okay? So, a trustworthy person is someone who you trust. Um generally speaking, kids trust their parents. Um in most situations, kids trust their teachers but mostly kids are looking for friends who are trustworthy. You don't want a friend who's going to stab you in the back. Um when you stab someone in the back, it means you tell lies about them to other people. Um kids are always looking for friends who are trustworthy. When our own kids started going to school, our hope was that they would find friends at school who were trustworthy. 
friends who that they could trust and developed good and develop good friendships with. Um which is kind of different than sneaky. Uh a sneaky person and we do use this mostly to talk about kids. You can say an adult is sneaky but sometimes kids are sneaky. This means not exactly the opposite of trustworthy but definitely almost an opposite. A sneaky child will maybe cheat on a test. A sneaky child might if you say to a sneaky child you can have two cookies they might when you're not looking take three. A sneaky child um might hide when you're trying to find them. Maybe you're leaving to go to the grocery store. If you have a sneaky child they might hide on you. Um but a sneaky child is not trustworthy. I I would say it's almost the opposite um sneaky. But you can be sneaky in a funny way too. So, it's not totally negative but it does certainly have negative connotations. Outgoing is similar to talkative. An outgoing person enjoys conversation. An outgoing person enjoys talking to other people. Sometimes teenagers like to stay home but sometimes at a certain point in their life they become a little more outgoing. They start to enjoy going out with friends uh, or even visiting with other family members. So, you see here a teenager talking to an older person maybe her grandma. Um we would say that she's very outgoing. Um when, maybe when she visits family she talks to all her uncles and aunts. An outgoing person just enjoys being in social situations. Um let's do one more and then we will do some more questions. Um an active child. So, an active child this is similar to a um rambunctious child. This is similar to a child who is hyper. Sorry, I got I had to check my list. Um an active child just runs around. Active children love being outside. Um parents of active children like it when their child goes outside. Um but maybe you know of a child who's very active. Maybe maybe you are active. Maybe you're watching this and you yourself are an active child. I know I have members of uh people of all ages watching these videos. So, maybe you are active and maybe you are someone who runs around a lot. But we generally use this term to describe a child who likes to run around. If you use active to describe an adult, it means that they play a sport or they do exercising. They do or they exercise or they like run or walk. So, the doctor when talking to an adult might say, are you staying active? And you could say, yep, I'm a very active person. I go to the gym three times a week and I run twice a week. So, active when we describe a child means rambunctious or hyper but active when we describe an adult means someone who um is exercising regularly. Hey, give me one minute here um as I thank all of the people who are watching. I'm gonna switch the chat to members only and we're gonna switch to a few more questions. Um I do wanna welcome Anita who has become a member. We are moving into members only chat for just 10 minutes. So, if you are not a member, don't leave. The lesson will continue in a bit and my members do ask some really good questions. I do wanna pause though and thank all of you who are members. You help make this channel what it is. It's not just me making lessons. It's all of you having good conversations in the chat and leaving awesome comments as well. So, thank you for being a member and for clicking that join button at some point in the past. Uh let me get to the next question here. Um next question is from Guhan. Hi, Mr. Bob. How are you doing in Ontario, Canada? I'm doing good. Can I know some synonym words for the word friend? Thanks for answering, Mr. Bob. Um so, pal is an older word. Like, I have a couple old pals. I don't use that word much. I use friend a lot. We use mate a little bit in Canada but not very much. We would probably use the word buddy more especially out in the country. Like, yeah, my buddy's got a truck. He's gonna come and help me move some stuff. I'm gonna call my buddy and see if he can come over later. Um those are some of the synonyms, Guhan, for sure. Let's see in the chat. Uh Lolly and Mode Eggs are welcoming Anita. Thank you for being welcoming. Corey J says, don't worry to Lolly. Never mind. 
You're not boring. No, Lolly, you're definitely not a boring person. Julia is welcoming Anita as well. Awesome. I'd be pretentious if I said I was a well-behaved kid. <laughs> when you're pretentious, it means you declare things about yourself that may or may not be true but you think they're true. Um I was fairly well-behaved as a kid. I'm not 100% sure. It's hard to remember. Uh Ginerto says, hello, sir, Bob. Did you agree with when people become an adult, they will be non-active person? Yeah. So, again, a slight difference in meaning. Um but yes, many uh adults are less active than they should be um especially in North America. Let's see here. Sam the Taiwanese. Hello, teacher Bob. How do you describe a person who thinks he is always right or thinks they are always right? Dares to express his thinking a lot and doesn't like to accept others opinions. Well, that would be me, Sam. That describes me. <laughs> Sorry. No, I kid. Um how do you describe a person? We might say they're arrogant. Uh we might say that they don't take criticism well. Uh let's see here. Um but someone who thinks they're always right. Yeah, we might say they're big headed. We might just say they just think they're always right. Like we might use a sentence to describe that. Um but yeah, that's definitely sounds like a person who's kind of arrogant and maybe a little bit hard to work with. Um you might say they're hard to take as well. We sometimes describe people like that. Yeah, he's really hard to take. He always thinks he's right. Uh Maria. Hi, Maria. Hi, Bob. How are you this morning? I'm good. Coincidentally, I've been watching your videos about describing people this week. Is it correct to say that people who demand a lot of themselves are self-demanding? No, we wouldn't say self-demanding. We would say they push themselves, okay? When you push yourself, it means you're trying to do like Some days when I have a lot of work to do, I just push myself. So, I don't literally push myself but you could describe someone like that as someone who pushes themselves. You could say, oh, I need to push myself hard today. I have a lot of work to do. If people um are too much like that though, we say they're pushing themselves too hard, okay? And then you might burn out or get tired. Gohan says, Bob, is member only videos has ads? No, not usually. I don't usually turn them on. It's just one video a week um but um the other videos still have ads. There's no way for me to turn ads off on all the videos for members. I wish I could. I would probably do that but uh Gohan, my videos don't have ads in the middle. I think some of the really old ones do. So, there's ads at the beginning and end but none in the middle because if people are showing my video in a class in an English class. I don't want there to be ads in the middle. That's annoying. Let's see here. Key Park, my child and I are not talkative but we talk a lot. We trust each other. That's a nice relationship, Key Park. That's awesome. Lolly, thanks, Corey J and Bob. Pas de problème. Naomi T. Hi, Naomi. Hi, teacher Bob. How would you describe your family members with using the adjectives we've learned today if I may ask? Thanks in advance. Most of our children are well behaved but they are very determined as well. Sometimes they're determined to do what they want to do and not what we want them to do but I appreciate the fact that they are determined. It's a good characteristic to have. I think all five of my children are very determined. They decide to do something and then they do it. Um that's a good character trait for children. Um a couple of them are talkative. I would say none of them are spoiled. (laughs) We have not spoiled our children. The only way we may have spoiled them is they have good access to technology. Well, relatively good. Uh Esio Wu. Hi, Bob. Can you tell me this pronunciation? Mischievous. So, I think some people say mischievous but I say mischievous. So, let me look up the official um the official pronunciation. Let me see which word you asked about though. Yeah, I would say mischievous. So, don't quote me on it. Uh find the right pronunciation. Sometimes I say words wrong. There's probably like five words in English I don't pronounce correctly. Uh Corey J. Hi again. Rob, would you say being a jack of all trades is a handy person? So, jack of all trades can be used in a positive and negative tone. You can say, ah, he's awesome. He's a jack of all trades. He can fix anything. Or you could say, ah, he's a jack of all trades but he's not good at any of them. So, 
Definitely, it can be used in both a positive and negative fashion. Mode egg. Speaking of humble, what exactly does it mean when used in I am humbled as a reply to a compliment? If mode eggs said to me, Bob, you are the most amazing person in the world and I said, yes, I am. You're right. That is not humble. But if I say I'm humbled by that, it means that um I appreciate the compliment but I I would rather not say that I am the way you say I am because I don't want to sound arrogant. I would rather just be humble about it. Anita, dear Bob, what's the difference between preservative and persistent? Thank you. So, preservative, preservative. Um I think you might be asking about it's like preservative is just something that preserves something. So, when they make food, they put preservatives in and it keeps the food good. I'm trying to think of if there's another descriptor you're thinking about. Um but definitely preservative is not used to talk about people at all, Anita. Anyuat, is the word mischievous different in meaning when describing children and adults? Mm, kind of. Usually, when you talk about kids, it's said with a smile. Like, it's like a kid does little things that are bad but it's kind of cute but as an adult, it's just annoying. <laughs> That's what I would say. Uh let's see here. Rod, I might say I have always been a rule follower. I don't know if it's good or bad though. It depends. I think that as a child, for the most part, I liked rules and so, I followed the rules and I turned out good, I think, Rod. Uh Guhan, who created the nursery rhymes called London Bridge is falling down because it looks like teasing London Bridge and the United Kingdom. I don't know who made that but as I look at some of the nursery rhymes I learned as a child, some of them are not appropriate anymore. I'm not sure if that's one of them. Corey J, smug, is it a synonym of arrogant? Yes, in a way. Yeah, when you're smug, you're you're kind of like, yeah, I'm all that. I'm I'm cool. I'm the best person in the world. Modeg says to Sam the Taiwanese, self-opinionated may apply to the person you're trying to describe. Not sure. Yes, you could say that. You might say they have a high opinion of themselves um or they think a lot of themselves. And then Eugene, can I use the word selfishness to describe people? You would say they're selfish. You know, he's a very selfish person. You could say they have selfishness but that's it's kind of awkward to say Eugene but we would definitely say that they are a selfish person. Uh Corey J, good point. Thanks. Lolly lolly. A mischievous child. Positive or negative connotation in English? Yes. With a child, kind of both. Like um oh, he's a really energetic and mischievous child. You you might I've said the word mischievous so many times. Now, I have to listen to the pronunciation. Yes, mischievous. So, I think I'm saying it right. I don't use the word very often but it is a common word in English. Hey, folks, I need to get back to the lesson. Give me a second here to turn off members only chat. Thank you so much to all of you who are members. Uh, and I should say hi to the 407 people watching. Sorry, I didn't get past more than one question here. Let me do two and we will get back uh to the lesson. This one's from Eugene from Etobicoke. Hi, Bob. What is your most I'm gonna phrase this a little differently, Eugene. What is your happiest childhood memory? That would probably be the most common way to ask it. I think anytime my grandparents were over, uh, those were happy memories. Um my grandparents were very nice people. My dad thought my grandparents when he was a kid as parents weren't very nice but as grandparents, they were really nice. They always brought us a treat. I always got a little bit of money for my birthday. Um that's probably a good memory, Eugene. When I got a birthday card from my grandma, it always had two dollars in it when I was a kid. Uh I really like that. Hey, let's get back to the lesson so we can finish this on time. We have uh, a bit of time left. We should be having no problem. Um yeah, Judith says, I hope you pronounce the English words properly. Judith, I think 99.9% of the time I do but sometimes I have to check to make sure. Curious. So, you could use curious to describe adults as well but we use this word a lot when talking about children. You know, he's a curious child or she's a curious child. Um he's always outside looking at insects and looking at the trees and just very curious, very interested in the world around them. Curious children are awesome. Um 
my kids are very curious as well. They all like to learn new things and I'm happy about that. It's good to be curious about the world around you. It's good to want to learn new things because you are curious. Uh let's see here. Um imaginative. I think this word might also be from another lesson. Someone who is an imaginative is very creative. An imaginative imaginative person probably likes to draw or probably likes to dream a little bit like in the sense of thinking about cool things that they can make. An imaginative person uses their imagination. So, it's an interesting word. When you imagine something, you picture it in your mind. When you are imaginative, it's easy for you to picture things in your mind. So, let's say the teacher says, draw a picture of the sky. If you were imaginative, you would have all different ideas for how to draw the sky and you would create a picture with a really cool drawing. So, um a lot of children are very imaginative. I think as we get older, we become less imaginative. I I think that's the sad thing about life. Um sometimes I wish I was a kid again because I was very imaginative. I had a lot of freedom and I had a lot of fun as a kid. Clingy. So, I think you can figure out exactly what this means. A clingy child always likes to be with their parents or with their grandparents or with someone and they will physically like to hold on to them. Um I remember my sister. I hope she's not watching. <laughs> my sister when I was a kid, my sister was very clingy. I remember her actually doing this to my dad. She would always cling to his leg if we went to the shopping mall or if we went out in public. She always wanted to be carried. I really hope my sister's not. I'm not gonna say which sister. It's a mystery now. Um but uh a clingy child is someone that wants to be carried, wants to be held and then even when they're not, they might want to hold your hand or they might even cling to your leg like this child is doing. A clingy person. We use this also to describe adults but not in a physical way. A clingy, a person who is clingy as an adult simply wants to be in the same place as you. So, you might have a friend who's very clingy uh who just always wants to visit you and be around you. Um but when a child is described as clingy, they're very uh uh physically clingy for sure. Uh moody. So, moody generally means a negative mood and different moods, okay? So, a moody person might be kind of happy and then sad and then angry and then upset. They're just someone who goes through a lot of mood swings in a short period of time. Teenagers can be very moody. They can be happy one moment and then angry the next moment and then uh, sad the next moment. So, a moody person has different feelings and moods usually quite rapidly. Um teenagers, when I was a teenager, I was really moody. You know, I was happy one moment and then I was annoyed another moment and then I was happy again. I was a very moody teenager. Impulsive. So, an impulsive child thinks about doing something and then does it right away. So, this child I would imagine is impulsive. They found a rubber band or what we sometimes call an elastic. They found a rubber band and then they just shot it without thinking about whether they should do it or not, without thinking about what would happen. An impulsive child is usually always touching things. When you go to a store to shop with an impulsive child, they might just take clothes off the rack and look at them and you might be saying, hey, put that back. Don't touch everything. So, an impulsive child thinks about doing something and then does it quickly without thinking. We also use this to describe adults in the same way. Some adults are quite impulsive um but generally children are far more impulsive than adults. They do things quickly and without thinking sometimes. (laughs) Belligerent. So, a belligerent child is a stubborn child. A belligerent child is a child who doesn't always do what their parents say and sometimes gets a little bit angry about it. Um a belligerent teenager might actually get angry at their parents. Um one common phrase that teenagers sometimes say is uh, to parents is you're ruining my life. 
Um, so, sometimes teenagers, they'll stomp around angry and say, you're ruining my life and we would say they're being belligerent. A belligerent uh, child might also do things they were told not to do because they're angry and stubborn and they just do them anyways. I was a little bit belligerent as a teenager. Just a little bit belligerent. Let's um let's look that one up for a sec though. Let's just make sure that I have the full. So, let's see. Hostile, aggressive, determined to do what they want to do rather than what they are told. That's the description of belligerent directly from the internet. Inconsiderate. When someone is considerate, they think about the people around them. Let's see. Where did I have that word? So, a considerate person helps other people. An inconsiderate person doesn't care about the people around them and to me, this is the best example. If I was in a movie theater watching a movie and someone was talking on their phone during the movie, we would say that person is inconsiderate. They aren't thinking about how their actions affect the people around them. They are inconsiderate. Um we also if you want a stronger English word, we might say they're they're a jerk. <laughs> that's kind of that's a derogatory term. It's not quite a swear word but it's not a nice thing to say. Um but here is what I might actually say. The movie was good but some jerk was on their phone the whole time during the movie. That would be a totally normal English phrase to say. A nicer way to say it would be I was watching the movie and I didn't enjoy it. Someone was on their phone. They were very inconsiderate. Um but sometimes you just use other words. Um uh, this is not a term we use in a positive way. This is a very negative term. It's derogatory. That means it's 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 not good and you shouldn't use this word but you need to know this word. A crybaby is used to describe someone who complains easily or actually cries very easily. So, sometimes you might know a child who you know for the simplest reason they start to cry and someone might describe them as a crybaby. I would not use this term. It's a very rude term but you will hear this word in movies and on television. So, you do need to know it. So, this is definitely a word I'm teaching you so that you recognize it but not a word to use because it's it's kind of mean to use this word. But when you watch a movie, you might even hear them describe an adult as a crybaby. Someone who cries a lot or someone who complains or whines a lot might be described as a crybaby. Interestingly enough, two of the most common ways to describe children are to say that they are a good kid or that they are a bad kid. So, we have good kids. Um they'll say, ah yeah, my nephew, he's a good kid. Um or hey, um Oh, I was just trying to think of another example for bad. Um yeah, you could say, oh, my cousin's kid is a bad kid. So, a good kid obviously does good things. A good kid maybe has a part-time job, is saving up money, um has friends and goes to school and gets relatively good grades whereas a bad kid um might skip school. A bad kid might um not do their homework. A bad kid might have a job and then not go in and get fired. So, good kid, bad kid. They're the simplest ways to describe people but they're very, very common. Um in fact, sometimes people will say, hey, you have good kids. Um no one's ever said I have bad kids. I hope they don't. (laughs) I hope I don't ever hear that word. Um we also have the term messed up and sometimes you'll say, uh hey, did you hear about the neighbor's son? He got arrested. And someone might say, yeah, he's messed up. So, it's again not a nice way to describe someone. Um a kid who is messed up maybe has gotten in trouble with the law. A kid who's messed up might have started stealing things when they were 12 or 13 when they were younger. But usually, we use this to describe um teenagers who do things that are illegal regularly or even sometimes adults. You might say, yeah, my cousin Joe is messed up. Uh he's always in trouble with the law. Um he's just a messed up guy. Brilliant. So, this is a positive one of course. 
when a child is brilliant, they do <laughs> like this is a really little kid doing some pretty high level math. Hey, Daniel, thanks for the super sticker. That's awesome of you. Uh, thank you very much for supporting me. Um, so, brilliant is used to refer to light. Like, a very bright light is brilliant but we also use it to describe people. You could say, ah, yeah, um, I have three students in my class and they're brilliant. They always get good grades. Um, most parents, just between you and me, most parents think their own children are brilliant but not everyone is brilliant. Uh, A lot of people, most people are very intelligent in certain ways but a few children are actually brilliant. They're just super, super smart and we also use the word gifted. Although we don't use this as much anymore. We usually say talented but a child who is gifted is good at something um beyond their age, okay? So, if you know a child who's eight or nine who plays guitar really, really well, you might say they're gifted. Um if you know a child who um gets 100% on every test and quiz in a math class, you might say they're really gifted. Um So, it doesn't mean smart. It means that you are good at something in a certain area, okay? So, you can have kids who are just really gifted at playing certain musical instruments or they're really gifted um at um let's see public speaking. They just might have a gift for that. So, gifted is the word we would use. Hey, that's the end of the formal part of the lesson. I'm gonna jump over and see where I'm at on the questions. I think I can finish them off. I have a lot of time today because uh I'm stuck at home anyways. I'm not allowed. I'm going one place today. I'm going today for a COVID test. Um it'll be negative. I'm pretty sure. I don't feel sick at all. Um for those of you who are wondering why I'm suddenly talking about COVID, I uh found out a couple of days ago that a student last week, a student was in my class who tested positive for COVID. And so, now I need to self-isolate for 14 days. It has been eight days I think now. Getting a test later. I feel great. I don't feel sick at all Um, but I'm living in this room uh and I have the one bathroom in our house is my bathroom and uh I just kinda have to stay away from people for a bit. It's not very fun but anyways, let's get to the questions. Um I'm gonna skip any questions not related uh to the dictionary or sorry to the lesson. I don't know why I said dictionary there. Uh from potato. Hi, dear teacher Bob. I hope your day is great. It is. I have a question. How can I describe a person who is a very who has a very high opinion of themselves? Thanks in advance. We would just say they think a lot of themselves or they think really highly of themselves. We would literally describe it that way. Um we would use your phrase almost exactly. They think very highly of themselves. Let's see. I'm gonna skip any questions that aren't related to the lesson, okay? So, if you don't see your question, uh sorry about that. Next question is from Fox. What to call a person? I'm gonna change a word there. What to call a person who is sly like a fox in a smart way? Cunning, tricky, inventive, intelligent? We would say they're sly. We would say they were we might even say they're sly like a fox um but I think we would just say they're sly. Um Cunning, yes, but that's an older word. I like I wouldn't describe my neighbor as being cunning but you might hear it on a TV show or see it. Tricky, maybe. Usually, sly though is we just use sly. Like they're they're kind of smart and they kind of they they find ways to do things that are kind of unique. They're definitely very sly. Uh next question from Amal. What? Hi, Bob. Good morning. My question is what does drown out mean? When you are at a stadium and everyone is cheering, it will drown out your voice. You won't be able to be heard uh because it will drown it out. Uh let's see here. <laughs> Max says, hello, Mr. Bob. I'm wondering how could I describe a person who is always cares about his appearance and acts like an idiot to other people? Well, we would say they're vain. When you are overly worried about how you look and you want your hair to be perfect and you want everything to look amazing, we would say you're vain. We might even say you're conceited. So, vain and to be vain and to be conceited means you you like how you look. You wanna look really good and you think you look good. 
Uh, and people who act like an idiot, we would just describe them by saying they're acting like an idiot. I know it's not, a, idiot is not a nice word. Um, it's a derogatory term as well but you would just say, ah, the guy was just acting like an idiot. Um, maybe you've had this before where you've gone somewhere um, and someone who you know has just acted in a way that you don't like. You would, you might describe them as acting like an idiot. Uh, let's see here. Um, from Fyodor, 10 years, Russia. Hello, Bob. What words can you use to describe school children in relation to the quality of their study? So, I didn't put the word studious on here. A student who studies a lot, we would say is studious. Um, we would say they're hardworking. We would say they're diligent. We would say that they are concerned about their studies. Um, but definitely, we would say they're studious. Um, and then if the opposite would be a student who doesn't give a care. So, some, if you have a student who doesn't care about school, it means they don't like doing homework and they don't like doing well. Let's see here. Yaroslav says, hi, dear teacher Bob. Wish you a great Easter. Thanks, Yaroslav. By the way, I would describe you as a devoted teacher. Stay healthy. Well, thanks, Yaroslav. Um, next question. Um... Dimitri says, hello, gorgeous Mr. Bob. <laughs> how are you doing today? My question is how to describe a person like tattling on somebody a lot. Thanks and have a good one. Um, we would say they're a tattletale. So, when when kids do something and another kid runs and tells the teacher all the time what the other kids are doing, we call them a tattletale um, or the teacher's pet sometimes. Although, a teacher's pet is usually more a student in class that likes to answer questions and help the teacher. So, not exactly the same thing. Um, Rabaz says, don't be friends with ill-mannered people. Can you give me other synonyms for the words ill-mannered? I would say people who behave badly. You don't want to be around people that behave badly. Um, that it's just not a good idea. I think that's the best description um, or match. Um, and then Ario, oh, sorry, Ario, your question. Well, I'll put it up. My question sheet. This is from Ario. How are you today? I'm late. Um, don't worry about being late, Ario. Um, but the lesson is over. That's the end of the lesson. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'll give you one more scoop about what's up with me. I am self isolating for 14 days. I was in the same room as someone who has COVID now but I don't feel sick. This was over a week ago. I will post on my community tab once I know the results of my COVID test. I'm going later today but just so you know, um, I am self-isolating. I feel fine. I don't feel sick at all. Um, I will find out in a couple of days um, if I have a positive or negative test and I will let you know. Other than that, a few things you need to know. There is no live stream tomorrow. I am taking tomorrow off. There will be a new video on Tuesday and things will continue as normal after that but uh, thank you for watching this lesson about describing people primarily about describing children. I hope that you enjoyed it. So, anyways, have a great day. Have a good Friday. I know some of you uh, have a bit of time off this weekend. Not all of you do but enjoy your, your Friday and your Saturday and your Sunday and uh, I wish you all the best. Bye, everybody. Thanks for being